Hi Seahawks. Lesson 9, video E. We just did the formulas for slope and y-intercept. Let's, uh, let's step away from direct loans and we'll pick a new example. We'll practice with the formulas and we'll practice with interpreting slopes and intercepts. Here's a neighborhood in Elkton. I have some variables, a bunch of houses uh, with their address. Assessed value, that's how much your uh, property taxes are based on, based on what the house is assessed at. So if you want to pay more in property taxes than this number, you'd like this to be high, but nobody wants this number to be high. Zillow value, Zillow is a website uh, that sort of predicts what your house is worth. Square footage of the house and lot size, also in square footage, not acres, that's square footage. In this data set, I, I can't remember how many homes there were, does it say? Looks like 33 houses. We're going to create a linear equation based on how big the house is, square footage, I would like to predict its assessed value. And in our heads we can think, well, the bigger the house, the more the house is probably assessed at. So we'd expect a positive relationship. Here's the scatter plot. Hopefully the video is picking up the dots for you. Um, we can see a positive line as we move left to right. The square footage gets bigger. We can see that assessed value tends to increase. If we were describing this, we would definitely say linear. Looks like a straight line. The strength looks sort of moderate to strong, right? It's, it's not as tight as direct loans to the line, a little bit of spread. Um, definitely positive and any unusual features you, it's up to you. If you wanted to start picking out a few of these points, that's your prerogative. prerogative I probably would say there's really nothing terribly unusual. Okay, so there's a scatter plot. I've got the summary statistics here on the next slide. You can see them in your notes. Assessed value, this is our y variable, comes up top here. And the square footage is x. Okay, 33 homes in the neighborhood. The means, Try to write this so you can see it. The top one is Y bar, that's the mean assessed value. So in this neighborhood, um, on average, the homes are assessed for about $224,000. Average square footage, 1935, we would call that X bar. And we've got our standard deviations because that is hooked up with the Y variable, S sub Y, and then the 669 is hooked up with the X variable is S sub X, okay? Over there is the correlation. We can see that is pretty strong, um, 0.914. So this is our, our value here at 0.914. Those are the numbers. If we're going to calculate slopes and intercepts by hand, these are the summary statistics that we would need to do that. Um, one note, in class, we may practice this method once or twice, but typically with the data, we would go to stat crunch and have it automatically calculate the regression equation. Okay, but we need to understand the ideas. Where is that equation coming from? Part A, determine the linear regression equation. There's three steps to this. Step one, we've got to get the slope. Slope comes first. Okay, so number one, first get the slope. Here's the formula again. B1 equals, this is R, times S sub Y over S sub X have all the numbers up top, so we know the value of R. I'll just round that to 0 0.914, 0 0.914 for the correlation, S sub Y over S sub X. So the 36, 736 goes up top, the 669 number goes on the bottom. I'll round these to two decimals. So let's see, S sub Y up top, 36,736, I'll put the .39 down below, standard deviation for X square footage, I'll just do 669.42, okay? We know this will be positive because the, the correlation is positive, we've seen that positive direction on the scatter plot. All right, put a squiggly equals, of course, there's some rounding going on. Let me find the answer here. Uh, 50.16. 50.16 is what I got. All right, so that's the slope. 
keep that number handy. First get the slope, next we'll get that y-intercept. We'll use the other formula. All right, pause the video if you don't have it, because I'm going. All right, part two, get that y-intercept. Y-intercept, b sub zero equals, what the heck's that formula? Y bar minus b1 times x bar. Okay, we had this in the previous video. You've got it in your notes. Up top are all the numbers that we'll need to plug in. And let's see, y bar equals, so on average, this is the 224 number. So we'll go 224, I guess, comma, 263.64. We subtract off the slope. The value of the slope was a positive 50.16. So minus 50.16, and then we plug in x bar, which is the average square footage. So that's the 1935 number, 1935 points around to two, so 0.85. This will give us the value of the y-intercept. I have no idea what this is, but I did write it down. Uh, 124,161.40. All right. 120, 127, 161, and 40 cents. Okay, so that's part two. Remember the goal, let's write the equation of the regression line. So we've, we've got our pieces and parts. We're not quite done. We've got to put this all together. Okay, if you don't have this already, Pause the video, I'm gonna switch the slide. Finally write the model correctly. Right. Make some space. Off to the side here, remember, that's the general form of our regression equation. Y hat equals a B1 times X plus a b sub zero. When you write the model, you need to use the words, the variable names. It helps, it helps us to understand what the problem's all about. So, for y hat, I'll, I'll put the variable name with a hat, and what we're trying to predict is assessed value. So we'll put assessed value with a hat on it, equals the slope. This is the 50.16 we calculated two slides ago, times x, don't write x, write the variable name, times square footage. I'll just abbreviate that, square foot like that, and then we're going to do what? Plus or minus, I can't even remember, was a plus. Here's the y-intercept, b sub 0, and this was 127, uh, 161, and 40 cents. So there's our equation. We use the variable names, which is important, helps us remember what we're talking about. And assessed value equals 50.16 times square footage plus this y-intercept down here. Of course, the next part is students, let's, let's write a sentence. What the heck does this number mean? And what the heck does this number mean? Okay, in the context of the problem. You can see we're doing it again and again, even in the videos, it, it, it must be important. Okay. So down at the bottom, part B, interpret the slope with the sentence in context. Uh, I'll flip the slide. Give me some room to write here. Hope you've got this. All right, probably would, let's see, what is the slope? The slope was $50.16. Write a sentence in context. As x goes up by one unit, what happens to the y unit? What's the change in y? One unit, the x variable is square footage. So in this neighborhood, based on the data, for every extra one single square foot that a house increases in size, we would expect the assessed value to go up by $50.16. 
one way to think it, basically in this in this neighborhood, every square foot is worth fifty dollars in terms of a, a home's assessed value. Okay, we'll write that out for each additional square foot. Comma. We expect we expect assessed value to increase. Slope is positive. We expect assessed value to increase by fifty dollars and sixteen cents. As X goes up by one, what happens to Y? All right. Can we let's think about this just in the context of the problem? The slope is linear, which means if I go up by one foot, square foot, I'll get fifty dollars extra in assessed value. What if you put an addition on your house? Like think about if if you put on four hundred extra square feet, uh, add a bedroom off the back of your house. What would four hundred extra square feet get you in terms of assessed value? At least based on the model, right? As X goes up by one square foot, I get fifty dollars. If I said if, if X goes up by four hundred square feet, I would get four hundred times the fifty dollars. Right? Everybody follow? I'm not going to multiply that out by hand because I fear I might make a mistake in my head. But it's linear, so I can I can go from one foot to ten foot to a hundred feet to a thousand feet, and this would go up by that exact factor. All right. Last question, part C. Interpret the value of the y-intercept. We need two things to happen for the y-intercept to be interpretable. One, I've got to have data near x equals zero. And two, the value needs to make sense. Okay, What was the value that y-intercept was equal to, I forget. 100 something, right? 127,000, 27, 161, and 40 cents. That means that if I was to plug in x equals 0 to my equation, this point here would fall on that regression line 127, 161, 40. That is a point on our regression equation. Does that point make sense? This says zero square feet. Do I have any homes in this neighborhood that are zero square feet? I don't. This is definitely outside the scope of the data. So we can't really interpret that value. Okay. Uh, Y-intercept is just a point on the line with no real meaning, uh, x equals zero is definitely outside the scope of the data. To, to try to meaningfully interpret this value it would be extrapolation. And the smallest homes in the neighborhood, I think, are maybe about 1,000 square feet. So we have no data anywhere close to x equals zero. And this is what we would say. Y-intercept is just a point on the line. All right, a little bit of practice there working with these important concepts. We're going to keep adding layer and layer of regression material. So we'll see you in class. Thanks for watching.